It's Tana Callow here. I'm going to go over today my pool project that I did a little while ago. Um, sort of the idea behind it, what the goals were, uh, how I achieved certain effects, what compromises I had to make uh, through different prototyping phases and such, uh, and ultimately what, what the goal was. Now, in this project, in that video that I made, all I used were household objects. Um, this pool stick, this tape, and a motion controller. It's all PlayStation hardware and my TV and such. The only programming was done in Dreams itself. No outside trickery. Um, the, the ultimate goal is just essentially to make sure that this is doable, that I can achieve this effect. Um, it might not be like totally realistic, but I had fun doing it and it uh, certainly mimics as close as I can manage actually playing pool, which is the, the original idea anyway. So I'm going to go through some of those different things now. So one of the first things that I decided what, that was really important to this project was perspective. I wanted to make sure that the balls hit the edge of the screen and look like they were bouncing off the perimeter of my TV, as well as I wanted to make sure that the spheres remained circular um, no matter where they were on the screen. With the default field of view, you actually get a bit of warping. So if we switch here, here I'll show you. If I move this sphere over here, one towards the middle, and another to the edge, the spheres on the outer sides, on the sides, are, are warped out a bit, whereas the sphere in the middle is uh, quite round. Now if I switch back to the uh, modified field of view, everything is pretty spherical no matter where it is on the screen. That was something that I really wanted to make sure I got right. And I did that by having um, a camera way up high. So I've got the rectangular table here. This is my sample camera to show the default field of view. And then way up there, way up here, I have this camera. So with its modified field of view set to 10 degrees, I pulled it back to the point where the edges of the, uh, of the pool table came to the edge of the monitor. Another thing I wanted to be sure of was the geometry um, of the scene itself. Now obviously the rectangular floor wasn't too difficult to do. Um, what I ended up doing for the sides is I just have these walls here acting as the border to the, uh, to the table and then gaps for the pockets. And that wasn't too difficult to do, but what actually gave me a bit of trouble was the physics on the balls themselves. Now everything's got pretty much the same uh, physics settings, um, but I modified like the friction and the bounciness, uh, weight and all that um, in accordance with its scale. Another thing I have here is this giant bowl beneath and around the table so that as balls get sent down, they don't fall too far from the center of the uh, of the scene and you don't get that error message that says an object is too far from the center. So one of the things I wanted to be sure of was to use the move controller um, to mimic sort of holding a, a pool stick because it's cylindrical and how it technically could work with the dual shock, but I wanted to use a move specifically um, for my sake. Um, now I discovered something while I was putting together the first prototype in that uh, when you have the PlayStation camera sitting in front of your TV, parallel, uh, facing outwards, you have uh, the motion controller being tracked as you'd expect. So moving the controller forward and back moves the imp forward and back, up and down moves the imp up and down. What I was going to do was take the camera and suspend it from above, have it pointed downwards, um, and then as I move the motion controller across, the, uh, the TV would interpret that, I thought, as me sort of moving the, uh, the motion control up and down, even though I'm moving it side and side. What I discovered, though, was that the motion controller might be kind of tricky to show off. 
If I suspend the camera up above and I track the imp, if I can find it, is moving it uh, forward and back and up and down still has it move up and down and forward and back. So even though I would move my controller like this, it would still track uh, in, in that way. So, that so having learned that about motion controllers, I figured I needed to find a way to still use the mo motion controller um, and move it on a horizontal plane and rotate it as such. Um, but I, I couldn't do that with my original idea, which was um, to have a piece of geometry with a force applier on it and have that geometry possessed by the motion controller and just wherever I pointed the motion controller with the right input, it would send a pulse of energy for the uh, ball to, to move. Um, I'll go into the logic of how I ended up doing it a bit later, uh, but I'll just show you the build right now real quick. I had a, uh, a motion controller and with that tape I showed, I just wrapped the motion controller to the stick so that wherever the stick was pointing, so too was the motion controller. And it was at a position where I'd hold it uh, with my hand and just guide it like you would a pool stick. That was the, uh, that's the build I ended up with. Like I said, I'll go through the logic later. Um, one of my earliest ideas with this project was just actually corresponding the position of the motion controller uh, with a piece of geometry and keeping in mind the perspective of the viewpoint. So when I film it, um, have the motion controller actually uh, move the geometry to impact the, uh, the white ball on the pool table. Now I've done projects before where I tried to, just as like proof of concept testing, um, I, I did one where I like tried to grab a ball on the screen so with my actual hand pinch and then move it and the motion controller would attemptively track exactly where my hand is um, and move the ball on the screen accordingly. Getting that all to stay calibrated the whole time is actually really tricky and horrendously impractical. So I ended up coming up with uh, different methods. Uh, the next method I was going to try, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, was um, using the pool stick uh, and the motion controller attached to it, uh, have that possess um, a piece of geometry and then a force applier on that piece of geometry. Now, when I mentioned earlier the, the, uh, the PlayStation camera and how I thought I could suspend it up above and then just track the motion controller that way and problem solved, um, the way that, that tracks that prototype wouldn't work. Um, so the build that I ended up uh, filming and uh, showing off has its own issues. Um, for example, there, there are times where uh, the, the angle of the motion controller doesn't exactly match up with the, uh, the angle that the force will be applied. Um, there's, you know, it's kind of tricky to find a position for the PlayStation camera, at least in my living room anyway. Um, a position for the PlayStation camera to where it will keep track of the motion controller the whole time um, and keep its position accurate. Now, if the PlayStation camera loses uh, sightline with the uh, move controllers, you can still use move controllers to track their angle. Um, so I've, I've done tests before where I've, I've hidden a motion controller in, say, my pant leg or my sleeve, um, and then different angles will still track and I can program outputs and inputs for those. Um, but I wanted to make sure it stayed accurate the whole time. Because if you play this uh, competitively, not, not that the physics are realistic and you should play it competitively, it's casual. But anyway, um, I wanted to make sure it, it would stay calibrated the whole time. So I had the uh, PlayStation camera set up in the corner of my living room um, and uh, just hope it would catch the motion controller as needed. Another issue with the filmed build um, was the, the hitboxes, if you will, of the pool balls themselves. Now, I presumed that if I just set physics to high, that it would react in a, you know, an accurate, as close to accurate way as I could get. Turns out, uh, someone messaged me on Twitter and showed me this, that if you um, set the physics to low, the, the hitbox is actually a lot more rounded 
than if you set the physics to high. So with my film's build, uh, it was set to high and the balls as they would kind of start to slow would sort of rock on these geometrical edges, uh, very flat edges that were there. Um, as well as they could spin wildly, uh, which was another issue um, that I'll kind of go into later. Um, but anyway, I, I ended up just using high because I, I thought that would give the most, most accurate reading, but turns out it kind of rocks the balls as they come to a, come to a stop. And that makes it a bit less accurate uh, to how a, a real pool table would work with spherical uh, spheres. So I'll give a quick rundown here of the logic I used in that filmed build. Um, I have this piece of geometry here that's possessed by the motion controller and these angle range sensors um, set to detect where it's pointing. Now one of the tricks I use is that I actually have the angle range to detect set to zero. So the, the, the point where it's set here it doesn't give a full on output. Instead, I actually have the angle range fall off set to 180. So what that'll do is as I tilt the controller around, it'll give varying amounts of output. Those outputs are connected to these keyframes. These keyframes modify these four suppliers here. I have one facing uh, one way and the other facing the other way. Now this keyframe will tilt them in a particular uh, orientation and this other one will tilt them the other way. Now there are a couple of tricks to using the, uh, the angle sensors that way. Um, the, the, main, the main gist of it is um, that it's set to angle range to detect zero and the fall off have, it, have that one be the one that senses where the uh, controller is pointing. I can go into further detail on that if people would like. Uh, that would take a, a, a little bit longer to explain. Uh, but yeah, that was that bit. Another piece of logic is the force that is applied, the amount of force. Uh, by default, these force suppliers are set to zero. So even if I send the output um, of apply force to the white ball, pulse, pulse the force, it'll be set to zero until I pull the right trigger. Now I'm doing that, uh, I, have, I have a maximum in mind set by this keyframe here. That keyframe is controlled by the right trigger button. So different degrees of pulling the trigger will give different strengths of a pulse to that force applier. That way I can do a soft shot, a strong shot, whichever. Another thing I have is a keyframe that brings the white ball back up to a certain point. Now, you know, in case it goes into a pocket, I could have it to where you grab the white ball and move it around. Um, I was actually having a, a little bit of trouble doing that in the way that I wanted to. So I ended up just having a default spot in the center of the table. Um, it's totally doable to like move it around to wherever you want before a certain point on the table like you would in regular pool. I just didn't get around to that in the build. Now I, I play pool casually when I get the chance and I, I like to have the, the different colored balls and see them spin and rotate and all that. But one of the reasons I gave them all red, um, not just because snooker is played with all red balls, um, but actually when the balls are impacted sometimes they'll just spin in place. I mean they'll move and then they'll just spin wildly even if they've stopped. Um, now I, I did red to kind of mask that a little bit so that you won't see that it's spinning as it's just all one solid color that rotation won't be detected. So with all of that in mind, uh, the way I end up playing it is I have this motion controller in my hand, have it lined up with the pool stick, and I'll take the point right to uh, before the white ball, hold the trigger for the strength that I want to give, and then right when I want it to give the impact, I'll press the X button, which pulses the, uh, the force applier. So as I come around the table, let's say I want to hit from this angle, just pull the trigger to determine its strength, 
at x, come around to this angle. Go from here, shoot in that direction. And yeah, you just mimic, mimic pool like you normally would. Yeah. Here's some overhead footage as well, just as a bonus. So yeah, that's my pool project. Thank you so very much for the positive reception it got. Uh, blew my mind that so many people were interested in it. Uh, I have a lot of, I've had a lot of fun making it. Um, still some tweaks to add. Um, I'm sure I forgot to mention something in this video, like, I don't know how I did the sound or something. Um, if you're interested in more details or need clarification on something, I can do a follow-up video, just let me know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for your interest and uh, thanks for checking it out. Also, real quick, here's a, a fun little quick photo of the first prototype I had and uh, what the living room setup looked like for that.